Hi, and thanks for dropping by for what I think is going to be a very interesting and exciting edition of Neighborhood Photographer right here at Visual Art Photography Tutorials. I'm Ray Scott. Today it's macro photography and it's called a splash of fruit. The reason why is because that's exactly what we're going to be creating today is uh, fruit going into water and creating really uh, dynamic images. Now the good news is that while a macro lens is preferable, you don't really need one for this. It just depends on some of the equipment and some of the things, some of the items that you're going to be using. So what we're going to, what I'm going to show you right now to start with is that you're going to need some type of a beaker or some kind of a, a vessel for water. Now this is a round one and the reason why I'm showing you this is because this really didn't work too well for me. Because it's round, there are all kinds of reflections that happen and it didn't really work. So preferable to be using something that is square. That way when you put the water in this, um, you have a nice flat surface and there's very, very little reflection and it's really good. Better to use glass than plastic, by the way. It's a little more clear. So, uh, and if you have something like an unused aquarium in your house, even better because uh, that would be a bigger uh, vessel. It gives you a lot more flexibility if you have something like an aquarium or, or just something that is bigger than what I just showed you. But this worked okay for me too. You're also going to need uh, some backgrounds. Like I'm using this background here, this black background. I use that. But I'm also using poster board. This works really well too. And you get it in all kinds of different colors. You can get green, red, blue, orange, all kinds of different things. So you want to use some poster board. Or uh, even wrapping paper works really well too. Now, what's the best way to do this? Where should you shoot it? Well, it's winter time here, so I'm shooting indoors in studio, and I'm going to be using lights, and I'm going to show you that setup. Uh, but you really need high shutter speeds. You need one thousandth of a second, two thousandth, four thousandth, that kind of thing to stop the action of the fruit going into the water. So really, what's the best source of light? It's the sun. So if it's summer where you are or just nice weather and you want to do this outside, go ahead. It's great, as long as it's not too windy because it might you know, play around with your backgrounds and things like that. But sunshine, doing it right out in full sun will give you high shutter speeds and all kinds of apertures that you want, lots of flexibility. Now, like I said, I'm doing this indoors and I'm doing it with constant lighting. So it's going to work for me, but I'm going to have to bump up my ISO to like around 800 or maybe even 1600s, which is okay. It's not causing a lot of digital noise for me because my camera is a Canon 6D and quite frankly, it's, a, it's really good with, with noise. It's, there isn't any really too much, even at 1600 ISO. But you can see it's a little bit limiting with studio lighting, but it works really well. The other thing you can do is use flash. So it's totally up to you. Outdoors, studio, flash, constant light, doesn't really matter. It's what works for you. It's what you have available. To you, all right. Now, if you're doing it indoors like I did, um, you probably need something down on the floor, maybe a little bit of newspaper or some kind of paper or plastic, because uh, depending on how high you hold the fruit over the vessel will depend on how big the splash of water, and, and that may uh, get out over the floor too. So we're going to be doing all that today. I'm going to show you how to do it, and I think we're going to have some fun. Okay, so hopefully you've got all of your items in a row. You've got them all set to go. So we're going to do that. As usual, questions and comments can be addressed down below. Let's have some fun today. So here's the setup, and I've got my two lights here, constant light. And as you can see, they're very, very close to the, to the water. And that's because I'm really trying to get all of the light that I can get. I really, really need it. So if you're outside, you don't have that problem if you're shooting in the sun but I needed to get close. So that's what I'm doing. Now for the purposes of, of the tutorial, I have already focused on everything, but I'm going to show you now that what you need to do is set your focus on your camera on autofocus, grab your piece of fruit and focus on it. Once you've done that, once you focus, then go back to the camera, take the autofocus off so that you're now in manual focus, raise your fruit up and then fire away. And I've got it set to a multi shot, not single shot, but multi-shot. So I have an opportunity to grab a few frames while the fruit is falling. 
as you saw previously, we drop the strawberry in the water and you get a splash and you stop the action, in this case with a shutter speed of 1 2,000th of a second. Aperture of f5.6, not a bad depth of field for this, and this is what you get as you stop the action. And the light coming in, the constant lighting that I have coming in, look how it highlights all of the bubbles and all of the action. And the strawberry uh, really looks nice and clear. And that is a critical point, of course, as, as you can see, is getting the right, dropping the strawberry at the right depth so that it is in focus. It's a lot of this, of course, is trial and error. On this one, I, I left the green, I left the vegetation on the strawberry just for a different look, okay? And this is what you get. It's really nice because this one is up really close and you're, you're, you're right at the surface of the water. You know, you're sort of half above the water and half below the water. I like the effect. This one up even closer for a more abstract look. And you're getting that because you're not showing all of the fruit. You're just showing a portion of it. And then you have this waterfall as it, as it comes into the water. And it's just like it's draining into the water. And you look at up in the, in the left-hand corner there. You have that little reflection of red up there just to add a little bit more positive tension to the image, something more for your eye to go to. And of course, the black background for me with the red works really, really well. Something a little different here, trying that green poster board that I was talking about. You can use any color you want. This is a great thing about it. And in this one, I'm including the bottom of the vase uh, just for a different look as this thing plunges down like a submarine. And this is an orange wedge. We've gone from the strawberry to the orange wedge as it plunges into the water. Again, all of these are at shutter speeds somewhere between 1,000th of a second and 1 4,000th of a second. And that's what you get. You stop the action bit of a blue, bluish kind of background, almost turquoise background. And uh, I'm showing you this one because, you know, just by absolute chance, I mean, it's what are the odds? Look at that drop up at the top and it's formed a heart. <laughs> How that happened, I have no idea. It was at that exact moment in time, you know, a, a fraction of a second and it's a heart. Anything can happen in photography, right? This one coming down back to the green uh, background as, and this is the thing about the orange slice. And if you use a lemon slice or lime, the same kind of thing, you never know how it's going to hit the water with the strawberry. It's going, it kind of goes down in the same direction all the time because of the shape of it. But here, sometimes they go plunging in straight down. Sometimes they're flats and this one came in flat and you have that. Now I should tell you in this whole process, I must've shot about 50 or 60 different frames, maybe even a few more. And you know, you pick out the ones you like the best, right? And finally, just to show you that you can show the vessel too, and that can be part of your composition. If you want, you don't have to just shoot just the water and the fruit. You can actually incorporate uh, the vessel in to your photographs if you want. So the possibilities are really endless on this one in terms of color of background, in terms of what kind of fruit you use and what kind of uh, vessel you're dropping your fruit into, shutter speeds. You can even go with longer shutter speeds if you want, if you really actually don't want to absolutely freeze the action. Totally up to you. Lots of fun. Hope you enjoyed it. I enjoyed bringing it to you. And until next time, remember, it's not what you see, it's how you see it. And I'll see you soon.